Okay! Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Still not great. <laughs> yeah. So... Also, can I... Actually, before I go any further, can I bring up something else that I've been meaning to talk about with Lila? The character of Lila? Um, I did not think about it at all during the entire time she's been on this show. But she's Harbinger, one of the... Uh, Amazon characters. Now, now probably, she's no doubt probably not an Amazon, but I was like, Lila, why does that name sound familiar? Oh, yeah, Harbinger. It did, I didn't realize that till last, like, earlier this week when I was, uh, like, uh, just combing through uh, through uh, old Wonder Woman comics, and I was like, Lila, she's in here. Oh, Harbinger. Shit, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, so on the review... In this episode, Arrow versus Adam, and stuff happens with the Suicide Squad. Best synopsis ever. <laughs> anyway. But no, seriously. Uh, this episode, according to the Hellish Smile, is his final episode. But having said that, though, me personally, I'm still going to be sticking with the show. And this wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. All the stuff with Diggle and the Suicide Squad was actually really good. I really like that. Um, but I will say this. I cannot be the only person who thought of this, but did anyone else, when they did the flashbacks to, uh, to Deadshot... Yeah, the flashbacks were for Deadshot this time around. When everyone was watching that, did everyone else think American Sniper? Just a, just a cheaper DC Universe version of American Sniper? Was anyone else thinking that? <laughs> I was. Yeah. But it is something that, in all serious though, it is something that I'm glad they, uh, I'm surprised they actually touched on in kind of real brutality here, especially on a CW show, of uh, PTSD. And that's something that is, uh, it's an actual thing, and, you know, people talk, you know, you see it in some TV shows, but you never really see it as, um, as kind of like raw as this. So I gotta give CW a lot of credit for going up very raw with that. And I, you guys probably know the scene I'm talking about with Floyd pulling the gun and holding it to his wife's head. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they gloss over in some cases in some TV shows. It, this was a very, like, over, like very raw scene, like I said, for especially cable television. I gotta, I gotta give him credit. Points to you. Also, uh, looks like Hive is coming, finally. I think, uh, yeah, we finally get more Hive, but now the question ling still lingers, why did Hive want Andy dead? Why did they want Deadshot to kill Andy? And, yeah, Hive looks like it's going to be bigger soon, but I think the bigger thing is that it's going, it, while Oliver is going to be dealing with, the, I don't know, the, the, uh, League of Assassins, or whatever the hell is going to be, Bane, or whatever, for Season 4, I think what's going to happen is that that's going to be Oliver's story, and then the sub-story with Diggle and Lila, and Lila is that they're going to be dealing with Hive. And that's that shit's been talked to, like been casually mentioned once in Season 2. Now, finally, we're getting, you know, another mention of it. And it looks like it's going to be playing a bigger part soon. So, really excited to see Hive coming, but let me say this, I will be really happy, and also, like, if it happens, but I'll also be kind of like, aww, <laughs> if you don't have, if they have Jinx, uh, Mammoth, Gizmo, Billy Numerous, and Kid Wicked, as the, and make a h version of the Fearsome Five or the Hive Five, seriously, you, <laughs> you can at least do, you can at least do Gizmo and Mammoth, and possibly Jinx, just say her powers come from, you know, the Dark Matter energy, um, say, it, yeah, so do that, and at least have those three as high as hive agents. Come on. <sighs> anyway, I'm I'm dreaming too big, but I know most of you are thinking that too. Is like, can we get a Gizmo, Babbitt, and and Jenks, please? Seriously, come on, uh, come on, uh, come on, DC, uh, come on, CW, DC Universe, be a bro. <laughs> but yeah, all the stuff with. Uh, with the Suicide Squad and, you know, Diggle and Lila and them trying to, you know, come together and still try to work out what it means to be a family as well as still be with their daughter. It was all really good stuff, but I will say this. The whole thing with the Senator trying to do this very elaborate, almost... Did it come off like something you'd see out of Lethal Weapon? Was anyone thinking that? 
Because I was like, that is so freaking hokey of the whole thing of the senator doing this just so he can get polls to be president. I was thinking to myself, that's a th well. Then again, I'm living, I'm watching a TV show about a universe where a guy in red tights runs really fast, and also another guy in green tights who shoots arrows at people. So, I guess you can go, com you can go full on comic booky with some of the villain plans every once in a while. Am I right? <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> that was just like, really, there is there is hokey ideas, and then there's really stupid hokey ideas. That was one of them. <laughs> but yeah, having said that, all the stuff with Diggle, I, I gotta say, once again, my fa the, I think the characters that really shine in this show these days are Ray, well, not, well, Ray's hit and miss, let me, let me say this again. Roy, uh, Diggle, and uh, and Detective and Captain Lance. Those three characters really shine in here. Those characters absolutely shine. So, speaking of Ray, let's let's talk about him. Wow, this is one of the few times where I can actually watch this show and be like, "Huh, Ray, you can be a great character around other characters when you're not around Felicity." Oh my God. I also kind of like had the whole. I did, however, like when he said, "I'm a priest." It's a long story, but I'm uh, but I'm I'm a certifiable priest. To which I was like, "That was a little too convenient, don't you think?" <laughs> but then again, um, Ray, it, like um, the uh, how Brandon Routh's version of Ray is like, you can buy that he's done it, like he has some weird explanation for that. So I can, I, in a way, I can I can give that a pass because it's so minor, really. And it actually brought up some really good comedic lines of like, I'm glad they brought up their own vows because I've only known them for eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. But yeah, when uh, when Ray figures out that Oliver is the arrow, and he's, you know, he talks to Felicity, and he's justifiably pissed off, but for some reason, she's not, you know, she thinks he's doing the wrong thing. And yeah, Oliver's not doing the killing here, it's the League of Assassins, obviously, but you gotta give Ray, because he finally brings up something that I've been waiting for for the past three, two and a half seasons. That being that he brings up all the killing he did in season one. All the people he killed in season one. He's like, and she even says, Oliver hasn't killed anyone in two years. And to which he, he quickly responds with, that's not actually your best <laughs> defense right there. And, yeah, Ray is trying his best to do the right thing. And, yeah, even when he goes to Laurel... He, <laughs> Laurel just pretty much stonewalls him, and again, Ray's trying to do. I feel like Ray's trying to do the legitimate right, like right, right thing. Also, Felicity continues to be completely stupid because again, I'm going to side with Oliver on this one. That when she says Ray knows who you are and he's built a super suit to uh, fight you, and Oliver says, "When were you going to tell me this?" I feel like. I'm with all I'm with Oliver on that one. Like you really dropped the ball here, Felicity, and I kind of wish you you dead your character dead. But I, I don't. It's not the actress's fault. She's just trying to go with what she's got. But it's the writing. Oh my God, the writing in here. And again, the whole thing with Oliver and Felicity, the Felicity stuff. Oh my God, I hate it. Hate it. Anyway, so. It also gets to high school level bullshit. Can I bring that up? It gets to high school level BS in here when he says, you know, you don't, Ray doesn't deserve you, you know, I can, you know, this and that. And it almost comes off like high school musical level writing. And I was like, oh my god, Stephen Amell, you are better than this, I know it. But I gotta, again, I don't blame the actors. I'm not blaming the actors. I'm blaming how they're being written. But yeah. So again, Ray's trying to do the right thing, but everyone keeps stonewalling him and treating him like a psychopath. To which he's not, and I'm thinking to myself, why is everyone suddenly, you know, suddenly treating him? He's the obviously more sane one of the two. And they point this out multiple times. He's the more emotionally stable one, and... All of, again, everyone says he's, you know, he's a menace to all, uh, you know, to everyone. And to which I'm like, no, no... No, but yeah, I am excited though to see um, Ray when he appears in the Flash because I did watch that little sizzle reel 
for season for the rest of the Flash season. And yes, you know we are getting Lo- I Laurel's hit and miss. The same with uh, Ray. But I'm hoping when they get to you know the Flash, maybe the characters will be re- better written. And we also have Felicity there too. Yeah. So, also, it. I do not want to be a mayor of Starling City because you die. You die bad in here. Like Maceo just dropped her one arrow, or dropped that bitch one arrow, and then like she, he's pointing an arrow at Felicity, and he, you hear the sound effect of it being let go. And for a quick second, I was like, <gasps> "Yay!" And then I remembered, "Oh, she's gonna be in Flash. That's right." Damn it. <laughs> uh. I did like this episode more than I did the last one, and I am actually kind of, I'm really interested to see where the next episode's gonna go, because like I said, they've been kind of building up to something equivalent to, uh, what, what's the name of that Batman animated series episode where, uh, Scare, you know, Scarecrow sprays that fear toxin on Batgirl, and she sees this world where Commissioner Gordon's hunting Batman, uh, with everything he's got. It kind of reminds me of that episode of Batman, obviously, because Arrow's trying to be Batman light. So, yeah. All in all, not a bad episode. The Suicide Squad was really good, and I know a lot of people are going to be asking, where's Bronze Tiger? I did come across some info regarding Bronze... apparently what happened to Bronze Tiger in the Arrow continuity. Uh, according to the DC universe... to the DC comics of Arrow, which is suppos- supposedly... He, and I use this term, uh, <clears throat> supposedly, quotations, uh, it's supposedly that said that that Bronze Tiger was killed by this universe's Teth Adam. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess Black Adam exists in this universe. Holy shit, that'd be awesome. <laughs> oh well. Guess we won't see him, but yeah. Anyway, so you guys tell me what you guys think of this episode. I didn't act like I I kind of complained a lot in here, but there are some really good moments as I obviously talked about with the Suicide Squad stuff. Uh, it was actually kind of fun to see Cupid because it was it, most of her lines were hilarious, and I love the line where she was like, "Did they hurt you, lover?" And Floyd's like, oh, "Great, now I really want to die." <laughs> but yeah. Also, I was kind of thinking, uh, did they just make a cameo, uh, like a mention of Rick Flag, in here? Because uh, she said, because Lila said her friend Rick was deployed back to the Middle East. So I was thinking to myself, was that just a clever reference to Rick Flag? I think it was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I know I come on here, and I'm really sorry I do. But it, it, every time they bring up the either the romantic stuff or something like that, it really rat bogs down the show, and I can't be the only one who thinks that, but yeah, it, there is some good, there has been some good in each episode, I mean, the stuff, uh, the whole thing, also, I kind of sided with, uh, I sided with, uh, Detective Lance, I mean, yeah, Captain Lance, when Laurel said, have you let your personal feelings cloud your judgment, to which I said, oh, you mean the feelings that you lied to him about for, oh, almost nearly three months, and... You also, uh, manip- you pretty much manipulated his feelings, you and Oliver, and you you pretty much manipulated him into allowing um, Oliver to get to where he is now. Well, actually, no, I take that back. That didn't make any sense, sorry. But yeah, you've pretty much screwed him over big time. So I'd say the personal feelings mixed in with what's going on now is... is... is, uh... Yeah, you have no one to blame but yourself for this. Had you told him up front, rather than lie to him for months, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be in this same situation. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would agree with me on that, on those thoughts. But anyway, so once again, you guys tell me, what did you all think of this episode? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Uh, what do you guys think Hive is going to be doing? Pro- they may be... E- okay, like I said before, either they're A, going to be the villain for Diggle while he while Oliver's off fighting whoever next season, or that Hive is going to be the big villain for season four. Uh, so re- uh, it could go either way, but I'm just I'm just glad they're talking about Hive again, <laughs> because that was just one little pat. Uh, you know, Floyd just said you know Hive wanted Diggle dead, so I killed him. Mwahaha. <laughs> but yeah. 
hopefully this will lead to, you know, bigger and, you know, grander things with, uh, uh, with, with, a uh, Hive. So, yeah. Anyway, once again, hope you all enjoyed this review, and I will see you guys later.